Hey guys, welcome back to my Absolute Beginner's Guide to Kerbal Space Program. This episode is going to be a pretty short tutorial, I hope, on landing on the moon. The moon is not the moon that you think of, though. It's not the moon. I'm going to be trying to land on Minmus. So you can see that I've already got my home and transfer orbit set up uh, just about the uh, the distance of Minmus's orbit. But I don't actually have an encounter. That's because if you look at a dead-on view, uh, Minmus is on a uh, an inclined orbit relative to Kerbin. So you can see that um, I've already got Minmus targeted. You just left-click on Minmus and uh, uh, hit select target, and it'll pop up with uh, what the uh, ascending node and the descending node are. So if you set up another uh, maneuver node at, while you're uh, while you're in that home and transfer uh, and then you can burn I believe it's gonna be normal yes and you can see that kind of raised my orbit from this blue one up to this kind of uh, orange and, and greenish one and then that gave me an encounter I actually I think it gave me a pretty good encounter but if I bring it up a little bit more it's gonna be whoa holy crap what the heck did I just do? All right, let me try that again. <laughs> uh, what the heck just happened? Let me try that again. Raise that up. Raise it 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 up. And then it starts to kind of get a little bit weird. I'm not sure what goes on with that. All right, that's pretty good. That gives me a 375,000 meter periapsis. So we'll finalize that maneuver node, and then we will fast forward because I am not going to have this take 44 minutes oh that's a little bit bad uh, why is that so far forward from the actual node Move it back. oh that's screwing it up so bad okay that's still good all right that still gives me an encounter okay so we're going to get to this maneuver node which is in nine minutes now Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one minute. Let me try to figure out where the heck this uh, direction I have to burn is in. There it is. Okay. Put RCS on my spacecraft this time because I'm tired of sitting here waiting for these stupid things to take 10 minutes to turn. Actually, uh, that's what I want. There we go. Alright, so fast forward a little bit more. It's not giving me an estimated burn time. I would say 38 meters per second with this engine. Probably 3 second burn at most. So we'll set it up right there. It's not, it doesn't really matter because it was so imprecise anyway. But I'll try to follow that a little bit because I realize it's kind of crappy. That's probably good. You know, it's just rocket science. Eh, that's good enough. Is it good enough? Yeah, it is. Okay. So you can see that now I have an actual encounter. I'm kind of uh, not on the same exact plane. It's still pretty uh, pretty inclined versus... Uh, you can see it's 0.7 degrees inclined. But, um, you know, it's not that bad. So we're going to fast forward to the point where we are uh, at our... Uh, or actually really coming up on our Minmus periapsis. It's going to take a while because we're going slower and slower and slower. And you can see that actually I'm kind of on a, a weird, like, I'm going to come back from the Mun, or f back from Minmus, and make an encounter with the Mun. I really hope that this actually turns out to be an encounter because it just went away. Come on. Come on. I'm going so slow. Come on, Minmus. I really hope that I hit it, or else this is going to be a really bad tutorial. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I was kind of doubting it there for a second. So with the periapsis, we're going to do a retrograde burn to kind of um, bring it back into an elliptical, or rather a circular orbit. You can see we're at a kind of weird orbit because of the inclination difference, but it doesn't really matter you know, what plane you're orbiting around. Um, you could probably save some delta V by actually being a little bit more precise, but it doesn't really matter. So that's roughly circular, 277, 341. Let's fast forward to that burn, which is really far away. Where's Minmus here? Let's see. While we're waiting, let's try to find Minmus. 
What plane would it even be in? I'm not even sure. It should be this way. Maybe. I don't know. Minimus, where are you at, son? Oh, there it is. Alright. It's just that huge rock in the sky. Uh, let's accelerate a little bit faster. We're going so slow because we had to kill so much velocity. Or we killed so much velocity uh, by being near the peri or the apoapsis. 13 minutes... 7 minutes, 6 minutes, 5 minutes, 4 minutes, 3 minutes, 2 minutes. Oop. Make sure I don't fly past it, because I really need to... I have not a whole lot of fuel in that main stage left, but I do have quite a bit of fuel in the actual lander, so... Alright, that's good enough. Actually, I probably should have found the... Probably should have found the maneuver node heading first. Uh, where is it? Uh, which direction am I going? Yeah, it's going to be up this way because it's retrograde. There we go. Okay. Sometimes if you have no idea where it is, you can kind of tell which way, which direction you're moving and then point that opposite direction or the same direction if you if you know you're going retrograde or prograde. So we're going to do a retrograde burn. And kind of fine-tune that at the very end for that last 12 meters per second. Ah, it's going to be good enough. Again, it's just rocket science. Rounding errors and so on. You can see I already tried to do a, a test run there. Okay, so we are in a fairly uh, far out orbit from Minmus. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Let's, uh, let's go to Periapsis and we'll do a retrograde burn there to kind of lower it. I probably should have done this before, but whatever. Uh, so I think 50,000 meters is roughly good. And then we'll set up, whoops, we'll set up another burn at that point to circularize it all the way. That's about good. That's kind of cool. You're kind of, you can see you're going to be like, whoosh, or uh, going down this way and kind of spiraling in. So another five hours out. These burns are taking so long because Minmus has like no gravity. So you, your orbital speed is so slow very long orbital periods. Alright, four hours, three hours, two hours, one hour, blah, 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 slow down. I really, really, really don't want to like, fly past it. I, I mean, it's pretty circular orbit, so it doesn't really matter too much if you're at the periapsis versus the apoapsis, but Ah, there we go. All right. Shoop de whoop. All right. So now we're just circularizing. Whoa! That was uh, that came up on me quick. I, I I wasn't even paying attention to how low the delta v that I needed was. All right. So that does that. Let's fast forward some more. See how utterly slow I am going. Okay. Nope. Okay. Yoink. All right. So we basically want to do a 360 or a 180. 360. Ridiculous. Let's turn that antenna on too. What good is a useless antenna without actually deploying it? Jeb has to be able to, to radio back that he's completed all of his burns successfully, right? Okay, so, lock on there. We'll just use the inertial controls. Alright, I might not have enough fuel left to do this burn. How much fuel do I have? I barely have any fuel, but I think I should have enough because it's only going to be like a half second burn. And we're coming up on it. Let me just kind of fine tune that and burn. That's pretty good. All right. Now we're at the points. Basically, where we left off in our last video, which is that we are in a circular orbit around the body that we want to land on. So, uh, Minmus is a little bit of a um, an odd case because it's so uh, it's it's so rough. It's not very it's not as spherical as the Moon. But you can see that it does have these kind of uh, uh, solid seabeds or you know lake, dry lake beds or whatever you would call them. Um, 
this I'm I'm gonna be wanting well, to try to land on the on the light side because it's kind of hard to land when it's a dark, obviously. So, um, what I'm gonna try to do is put a maneuver node a little bit forward, and I'm gonna want to try to adjust my orbit so it's kind of gonna be directly over a place where I would want to land. So if I just do that, you can see that I'm kind of it's gonna be directly over this little portion. So I mean, you don't have to be too fine but you don't want to be landing on this rocky part or else it's kind of going to screw you up so we're going to just going to execute that burn and it's uh, going to be about 112 meters per second delta v which isn't too bad and that'll get us basically uh on the right course to land where we want to land and the next step will be to actually set up our uh our uh entry trajectory i guess you would call it so let's fast forward a little bit. Jeb, I don't think at any point in this flight has been terrified, even even the part that I didn't record, so I think this has been a success so far. And we're gonna do the burn. Oh, and I ran out of fuel. Okay. So let's stage that. And do this. Alright, that should be roughly where I want it to be. Yep, alright. So, this is kind of a little bit weird, but it's on such like an incline, but... Alright, so now you can see that we're go. Whoa, that changed my apple axis quite a bit. <laughs> uh, so, I'm going to want to actually do... Let's do that right now. Let's do a, uh, a retrograde burn right now. Kind of lower that down. So that'll be the next step anyway. Even if it stayed circular, which it's not really gonna do, uh, if you're even if you're just doing like a pure um, retrograde burn, um, your next step you're gonna want to do is lower your um, either periapsis or apoapsis. Doesn't matter too much, but uh, here I'm just gonna since I'm at periapsis already, I'm just gonna lower my uh, apoapsis down. And you want to lower it until you're on a until you're just about um, kind of skimming a point forward in your orbit of where you're gonna want to land, but you don't want the like the termination point of your orbit, which is you know right here where it hits the planet. You don't want that to be right on where you're gonna want to land, or else you're gonna hit the surface um, going with it with quite a bit of horizontal velocity. So if we only get to say right here which is right above where we want to go and we do like a retrograde burn which you can see here and kill out all of our velocity if I can kind of zoom in on it a little bit you can see that we're gonna be um, heading down right onto where we want to go so that's about the point where I'm not gonna actually use that um, maneuver node that was just kind of to show you an example of where we want to land but we'll use the actual uh, the location of the maneuver node in the orbit as kind of a guiding point to where we want to start slowing down. And I think this is where a lot of people kind of get hung up is that you'll you're you're crashing into the surface instead of lightly landing into the surface. So I'm gonna kind of hopefully show you a few tips on uh, how to uh, not crash. <laughs> so let's slow down a little bit here. Oh lag. Okay. Uh, so we're going to want to go around in the nav ball and find out where uh, retrograde is. And it doesn't so much matter where that blue marker is. All we really care about is this green time down here, which is that we were going to want to burn in about 30 seconds. So we're just lock on to that um, retrograde uh, vector. And let's deploy our landing gear too. That can be pretty helpful when you're trying to land. So we have plenty of fuel here. We can waste a ton of time trying to land with this one's fuel. And I, I basically, to get here, I use the same, a, a version of the same, uh, the same land, the same uh, launch vehicle that I used to get to the moon, except that it was uh, uh, just less fuel tanks on the boosters and the in the central stage. So if you want to see how to build that, um, it's actually going to be in my asparagus staging tutorial and then you can see it being launched in my uh, get to the moon tutorial so I'm gonna wait a little bit longer even though we're like nine seconds past the maneuver node I just want to be able to look straight down and be able to see this like lake bed or whatever it is because that's the flattest part you just basically want to be a, a more or less directly above a port where you want to land so 
basically now we're just going to lock onto that retrograde vector and burn. And we want to burn away all of our orbital velocity. And right now I can be at 100% thrust, but as I get closer, I'm going to want to kind of slow it down. And you're going to want to chase that retrograde vector on your uh, nav ball. So just uh, keep doing little adjustments until you're chasing after. You can see that once my orbital velocity got down to pretty much zero, it kind of went all over the place because at that point, um, your uh, what which way you're thrusting is kind of taking over where your uh, where your uh, velocity vector is. So you can see that now the retrograde vector is more or less pointed up directly into the sky, which means that most of our velocity now is actually vertical. You can see it's not quite center. Center is right about where I've got that nav ball, but it's it's more or less center. So if we if we uh, we can turn our CS off, <laughs> if we thrust really slowly in like sort of the direction that the, the uh, retrograde vector is uh, showing us, we can kill out some of that horizontal velocity as well. And at some point, um, once we get close to the surface, uh, that orbital velocity is going to change to surface velocity. So that's more or less directly on the, the um, 90 degree zero heading, uh, 90 degree pitch zero heading spot on the nav ball so that's pretty darn good you can see that on our uh, orbital map we're not really in a let me delete that maneuver node we're not really in a in a parabolic orbit anymore we're more or less just in a straight free fall so this is this is this brings up the point of why I'm recommending that you try to land on Minmus before you try to land on the moon and that's because Minmus has like no gravity you can see that I'm not even doing anything right now and it's that my velocity is increasing at maybe about uh, 0.2 meters per second per second. So that's not that's not nearly as much as you would you would experience on the moon, and definitely not as much as you would experience on Kerbin. Not that you, anybody worries about landing on Kerbin because you've got the atmosphere to use parachutes, but Kerbin's uh, acceleration would be like something like 10 meters per second per second. Let me actually. Uh Deploy my TELUS Mobility Enhancer. Pretty essential. Oh, I kind of lagged out there. Alright. And you can see that now it's changed the surface velocity, and now we actually do have a velocity vector that's off-center because of the... Uh, let me actually hit caps lock and I'll change to precise controls. That's a that's another good point is that you use caps lock and it will um, let you make really precise controls without going all over the place. So I'm going to cancel out all the surface velocity right now. I'm about a thousand meters above the surface. That's another uh, point of landing on these sort of lake beds or whatever you want to call them. Let me cut the engine. Uh, is that they are minimum sea level. So whatever your uh, altimeter up here says is more or less how high you are up off the surface. Whereas if you're landing on these mountains, uh, you're, it's going to show that your altitude is, let's say, a thousand meters when actually you're like two meters from the actual surface. Let me cancel out a little bit more velocity here. And you can see that that, uh, that retrograde vector is more or less again right on the right on the uh, uh, zero degree zero degree point so now we're just kind of slowly floating towards the surface every once in a while you're gonna want to uh, kind of do a, a, a little bit of a burn and slow down that speed to a manageable amount it's going to take a little bit longer, but you really don't want the surface. I'm only about 200 meters above the surface. You don't want, you don't want that surface kind of creeping up on you, uh, or else you will you will crash. You want to keep it pretty low, and you want to land at probably about one meter per second, two, one or two meters per second or less. So now we're only about 100 meters from the surface. We've got a little bit of horizontal velocity that I kind of want to kill out right now. And you can even do this if you're good. Uh, if you if you get good enough with the whoops, here we go. You can see the shadow. Ah, there we go. That was kind of a bad. That was a bad landing because it kind of crept up on me while I was trying to cancel up my velocity. But you can uh, you can kind of bounce around a little bit on the surface of Minmus and still uh, 
not crash because the gravity is so low you're only going to be going about you know three meters per second it's not going to like it's not like uh when you, if you don't pay attention it's going to creep up like 10 meters per second at a time on you it's only going to go up pretty slowly so that's how i did it uh basically the, the the number one thing to do is pay attention to where that retrograde meter is or where that retrograde icon is on your nav ball and it'll just tell you which way you need to be burning to cancel out your velocity you, the main thing is that you want to have almost complete vertical velocity so you're falling straight down and all you have to do is just worry about what your descent uh, descent speed is. So now I'm on uh, Minmus and you can even, uh, if, if you want to dare to land on these mountains and hills, it doesn't even so much matter if you land sideways and you kind of crash down because there's so little gravity that your torque from your pod is going to be able to uh, cancel that out. So I can even, if I take off uh, precision controls down here by hitting caps lock again, I can just hit W, S, A, and D and kind of tip this over just using that kind of weak torque force. And it's kind of going to need to take some rocking to, to actually get all the way over. But you can see I'm just about tipping it. There we go. Oh, it's tipping, it's tipping, it's tipping. Uh, I don't think it's going to tip. I don't want to sit here trying to do it, but if I was over on my side, um, actually I can probably do this. There we go. Ah, whoops. All right. So if I did this and I landed this way, one meter per second, you can see there's so little gravity and your speed is so slow that I just, I fell right on that fragile little, uh, antenna and it didn't do anything. And then if you're, if you happen to be this way, even if you're rolled over, you can roll you can, uh, there's so little gravity, and obviously there's no atmosphere. You can, if you know which way you want to go, you can even just use the torque to slowly raise it up like that. And all you got to do is just make sure that you're pointing the nav ball towards the, the top of the blue. And there you go. See, you saw I could have just landed sideways, and it wouldn't have even mattered. I could have tipped over on landing, and it would have mattered. So there you have it. Uh, I probably have enough fuel to get back to... Uh, Kerbin right now, but that's basically just doing the reverse of how you got to the Mun, or uh, how we got to Minmus too. So that's that's pretty self-explanatory on its own. My next video is going to be on rendezvous and docking, so stay tuned for that. My next uh, video for my historic NASA missions in KSP series is going to be Gemini 7 slash Gemini 6A. So stay tuned for that too. If you like this video, uh, feel free to hit like. If you uh, have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to comment. And if you want to see more of my videos, uh, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and have some safe flights. Bye.